Lord to God, God be the glory. This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in this day. And we thank God for this opportunity once again to come into the service and just thank him for this opportunity to be able to lift up his holy name and give him the praise, honor, and the thank glory. And we just thank him for all things. We, we just always want to be uh, grateful and thankful and just always lift up uh, the Lord because we recognize that that he's worthy to be praised at all times. Amen. Amen. So we just thank God for this opportunity again. And I, and I want uh, everybody to continue to, to keep us in prayer, continue to keep the ministry in the prayer, in your prayers. We know we got people out with different ailments and we recognize that God will still get the glory even in that. Amen. And so we just want to lift them up in prayer, keep those that are sick and shut in, keep them lifted up in your prayers and those that are downtrodden, those that are disencouraged, just let's continue to encourage one another in the word of God. Amen. 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 And we uh, started off Wednesday or last week, we started off talking about love. And, and we want to continue to go in that. Uh, the Lord just been placing it on my heart to go deeper into this and just by the scripture and, and uh, recognizing that the gospel, the gospel message brings on uh, a totally different brings on a totally different I don't want to I, want, I, I just want to say that, that that transformation of the mind comes through believing and trusting the gospel of Jesus Christ Amen. and as we look at the, at the at the scriptures when it comes to talking about the gospel message we, we look at to that in John 3 16 that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth upon him shall not perish. And we recognize that God loved for us and love for the world that if we would come and believe upon Jesus Christ, that we shall not perish but have eternal life. And, and it goes deeper into that love that God shared for us, even when we look at John, when we look at 1 John, uh, when we look at 1 John 4 and 7 through 12. It said, dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his, he sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. Amen. Amen. Father God, we come before you with thanksgiving and heart. Thank you for another opportunity, Father God, to hear your word. And Father God, we pray today, oh God, that your word would have free course. We pray, Father God, that it be one that is still dead and lost in trespasses, Lord God, that will be saved today. Hear your gospel message, oh God, and, and, and be redeemed right now, Father God. Father God, we pray that your word would even quicken the ears of those, Lord God, that haven't ever heard the gospel. And Father God, we pray that even the edification in the saints today, Lord God, through your word will help us walk from day to day in love, recognizing that it is Christ in us that is enabling us to love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Father God, we ask right now that you will open our ears and quicken us and make us alive in your word, that we may hear that, we, what we need to hear. But in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and we say amen. Amen. Amen, amen and amen. amen. The gospel message is love. The gospel is love. The gospel is that while we were yet in sin, Christ died for the ungodly. And in, in that love that God has for us it was manifest in that what Jesus Christ did upon Calvary to redeem us and to reconcile us back unto God. But, the, but, but, but in, in, in looking at the scriptures and when we look at, I had a couple of you know I like to go to, I say good morning again guys, I pray that all is well, don't want to leave nobody out. But, I, but as we go into the scriptures today, I want us to go in, and you know I like to go in the book, and I want to put my eyes on scriptures, and I want to make sure that we understand as the body of believers that that there is uh, 
uh, a word for us that we should love one another, that we should love our neighbors as we love ourselves. And the example is Christ. The example is Christ. The example is what God did with, with Jesus to show his love. His, in other words, his love was unmerited because he died for sinners. He died for the ungodly. It wasn't that we were so good that he gave Jesus. It's that we needed to be saved and God gave his only begotten son and the love that he loved us so that he don't want nobody to perish. He said he wants us to be saved. I, I don't understand how we can get it so twisted to think, well, God is looking at he bad and uh, he going to hell. No, God want him to be saved. But why, 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 why you say that, Pastor? Because God gave Jesus that he loved us so much that even while we were yet sinners, he died for the ungodly that he, that this is the love that the believer has by receiving and believing the gospel message. And I got scripture to prove it. Amen. And so this gospel message tells us that once we believe upon Jesus Christ, once we believe the gospel, once we come before him as a sinner and recognize that there's nothing that we can do to save ourselves, that that, 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 that that love that God has for those that will come of the world, that will come and accept Christ as Savior, he enables us to receive the Holy Spirit. And then when we look at the attributes, when we go to Galatians, we're going to look at the attributes of Holy Spirit. And in the attributes of Holy Spirit found in Galatians 5 and, and, and 5 and 20 uh, fruit of the Spirit, which is the fruit of the Spirit, we're going to be the fruit of the Holy Spirit that dwells in us. How do we get it? How do we receive the Holy Spirit? We believe the gospel. We, we believe Jesus Christ died for our sin and we trust him by grace through faith and what he did upon Calvary. And that is that enables us to have the Holy Spirit. I will give you the comforter. OK, he's the comforter. Not only that, he is one that will remind you. He said, I bring back things to your memory that you need and ought to know. And not only that, he would enable the new man to be able to be what? Sinless. Sinless. The new man cannot sin. That new man that is in Christ cannot sin. But the old man can't do nothing but what? Sin. sin. Amen. Amen. I just want to see what anybody listening. Amen. So when we look at this, this, this scripture that I, I read today or this morning, it comes from this little pamphlet that I had back in the back. But it was John 1, uh, 1 John, 4th chapter, 7 through 12. Then it said, Dear friends, let us love one another. For love comes from God. Love comes from God. Amen? Amen? Love comes from God. And it's not that type of love that we're, that are oftentimes we're saying, oh, I love you, brother. And we can say that just, I love you, brother. But then we got to think about when God said that he loves us, I love you no matter how you are, I love you. And my, my love, God said, my love for you guys are unconditional. My my God, my love for you is agape. It means it is don't matter. Oftentimes we love as humans. Well, I love you if you do this for me. You get it? Oh, yeah. I I love you, brother Mike. As long as you keep doing that, brother, I love you. But as soon as you stop doing it, I don't want it. Oh, yeah. You get it? Yeah. But this love that is given to us as new believers or, or as believers, it comes from God. So the love that is in us through the power of the Holy Spirit can love unconditionally. Amen. Why? Because it came from God. If this, if, this, if, if this love that God has given us by us believing and trusting the gospel and he has given us the Holy Ghost, then we are able as believers to love like God unconditionally. Amen. Not only are we able, it's a commandment that Jesus told us to love our neighbors as I said, he didn't say go over and check your neighbor's fruit out and see how good of a person he is. <laughs> he didn't say make sure your neighbor doing everything he's supposed to do. Now he said love your neighbor as you love yourself. No matter how your neighbor is, you're supposed to love him. Amen. Well, how am I able to do this? Through the power of the Holy Ghost. It is, it is, it, it is attributes. It's attributes of the Spirit, Holy Spirit. It's attributes. And when he said, when so, so, as we look at the scripture today, I want us to look at a couple of different ones. You know I like to run. So let us go to Galatians first. 
the mind of Christ, the mind of Christ, the mind of Christ. And I'm reminded of Jesus, even in a lot of the, in the gospels and when oftentimes when the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they would come and try to catch Jesus in some kind of wrong. There was always something that they thought, that they thought, well, you guys don't wash their hands. It was always some kind of legalism or some kind of legal, legal thing that they had, men had made law. The woman calling the adultery and every one of them standing there and Jesus standing with, I can see Jesus standing with loving on them. Mm -hmm. Amen. And they're accusing her of something and they were the very ones that was in the wrong. And, and, I, and I got to think about that this love that Jesus came, even when he sees Zacchaeus in the tree, and he recognized that Zacchaeus was a tax collector, and he recognized that Zacchaeus had to wrong a lot of people, but Jesus said, come on down to the tree, we're going to your house and sit for a little while. We recognize that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to, 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 to die for the sins of the world that, that we can have life eternal. He did not come to die just for good people. He came to die for sinners. He died for ungodly. And when he died and when we accepted him as Savior, we received the Holy Spirit and it allowed us to have fruit of the Spirit. Fruit of the Spirit. Don't let nobody tell you fruits of the Spirit. It's fruit. It's singular. It's not plural. It's fruit. F-R-U-I-T. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. It's one of them. And we're going to do... I, I want to deal with this in Galatians 5, and I want to deal, I'm going to be in and out, but, but I want to go back in right here. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. When we receive the Holy Spirit by believing the gospel, God placed love within us. How? Through the Holy Spirit. So yeah, you able to love. We, we able to love. I can't do it. Yeah, you can. If you've been born again, you can. But I ain't going to do it well because that's your flesh talking. <laughs> flesh still there now. He's still there. He's still there. He's living. He's still there. So when we look at Galatians 5 and we look at I'm, I'm, I want to go here first and I'm going to go there. Here and there, okay? Galatians 5 and 13 said, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for occasion to flesh. But by love serve one another. By love serve one another. There it is again. By love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word. I want to kill. I want to squash something right there. I want to squash something about you keeping the law and the law tell you that, oh, this, that, that. I want to squash that. The law right here say, for all the law is fulfilled in one word. Even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Regardless if the neighbor is a heathen, love him. Regardless if the neighbor don't love him. Why? It's a commandment from God. It comes from Jesus Christ. He said you love your neighbor as you love yourself. That is a commandment, but it's not keeping the law. This is because the Holy Ghost dwells in you now, and it gives you the power to love those who despitefully use you. He said pray for those who curse you. Oh, man, it's hard to do. Why? Because we don't, we, it, 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 it's a such thing as grieving Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is there ready to love that one who hurt you or love that one who don't like you or love that. But guess what? You're grieving with your flesh and say, I can't do it. Yeah. Amen. This is growth in the believer. This is growth that we really need to be preaching about day after day after day. Why? Because once we receive the gospel, we have the Holy Spirit. And it don't mean you're walking on and do like this. It means that you're able to love unconditionally. Amen. And I know I won't get no amens on that. So if a person, or if we're not walking in love, because love comes from God, then guess what? You're walking in your father, the devil. When it's division, when there's hate, that ain't of God. That's not of God. Hate is not of God. Why? It's the fruit of the Spirit. Pay attention. Here we are. So now you see that thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And I know it's hard for everybody to do it. Then he said, but if we bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. This I say, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust 
of the flesh. So, so, so the believer, we're talking about love now, we're talking about uh, the mind of Christ. So the believer has the opportunity to walk in the spirit and to be able to love the neighbor as he loved himself. But when we take and don't do it and we walk in our own, then we're walking after the flesh. Go on, say amen while walking in the flesh. When we, when we don't make that decision by the power of the Holy Spirit to love unconditionally, then we say we're just going to do what my flesh going wanted to do. In the born again believer. In the born again believer. Why? Well, I don't know. Because don't nobody want to preach about this. The first thing I tell you is be, don't be equally yoked with this and that. Well, if you're going to be equally yoked with them, how are they going to get saved if you don't ever go amongst them? You might as well say amen. Christ died for the ungodly. Christ died for sinners. But if we're the light of the world and we stay hid, do you cover what he said? Do you take a bunch and cover up your life? That ain't love. That ain't love. That ain't love. So he said, come on, I'm going to go. Galatians 5, verse 22. He said, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against these, against such, there is no law. And they that are they are they are that are Christ have crucified the flesh with what the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit. Let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another, provoking one another, envying one another. So when we look at back at what I'm what I'm concentrating, what I'm keying in on today, we look at love. We recognize that's a fruit, but we recognize without this first fruit, none of the rest of those fruit can be could be available to you. But what you mean by that, Pastor? I know I got good faith, but you ain't got no love. Paul said that the, the greatest of all these is what? Love. love. He used the word charity, but it means love. He said if you can preach to the cows come home, and if you had, he said don't mean nothing. He said if you done gave everything that you ever had and all, it don't mean nothing unless you love. So right here we look at this, and we want to look at this, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, can't have joy without love. What's going on, Pastor? Well, you don't know. You can't have peace without love. You can't have love without long suffering. You can't have gentleness without long without love. You can't have goodness without love. You can't have faith without love. You can't have meekness without love. You can't have temperance without love. Love is the beginning of all of it. Well, why? Dear friend, let us love one another for God uh, love can't, for love, love one another for God, for love comes from God. So if love comes from God, then all these attributes that's in the Holy Spirit are all these attributes of the Spirit that God has placed in us by being believers. They are there. If we've been born again, if we truly trust in Christ for salvation, we truly know that we're saved by grace, then the attributes are there. Why? He didn't say that I'm going to give you just a little bit now. I'm going to give you a little bit later. I'm going to give you a little bit here. And I'm going to give you now. You are born again. That means you got the Holy Spirit in you. And this is fruit of the Spirit. These are fruit of the Spirit. But what happens is that we go back over here. For the flesh loves it after the spirit, and the spirit at, against the flesh, the flesh rises up. In other words, I'm walking in the flesh, and I ain't walking in the spirit. And if I'm walking in the, in the flesh, then I'm not even trying to even worry about what the words say. And a lot of times, it comes from ignorance of the word. It comes from not sitting up under the word. It's not, it comes from not studying the word. It comes from not allowing Holy Spirit to speak to you in the word. Amen. Amen. So, so in, in other words, that it starts with love. Everything starts with love. If I, when I look through the epistles, I continuously see Paul starting off talking about love in the believers. Go to Colossians. 
Go to Colossians. I, I want us to get here. I want us to get what we need to be so we can acknowledge, even if I have to, if we have to, be in prayer. Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you allow attributes of the Holy Spirit to uh, come alive in me so I can recognize what I need and how it, I can be able to walk in these uh, fruit that you have allowed me to get through Holy through your power. Because he allowed us, he has allowed us to have them. They're there. They're there. But we grieve Holy Spirit when we don't walk in them, but the love is there. Amen? Amen. Listen to what Paul said to the, to the church at Carlos. Listen to what he said right here and, and start at the third verse. And it, this is what Paul was saying about the believers there. Pay attention to what he said. And, and then we're going to look at what this gospel means so much. Why we can't have anything without the gospel. The gospel is the root. The gospel is the main line. The gospel is everything. If it's preaching going on without the gospel, it's a curse. It's, 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 it don't mean anything. Preaching without the gospel, you, you might what you say they're just talking. They babbling. He ain't doing, he ain't doing nothing. Amen? Amen. Paul said it like this. The Apostle Paul, he said it like this in Colossians. <clears throat> Colossians verse 3. Chapter 1, he said, We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Guess what he said to, the, to this body of believers? He said, Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the hate. Love. Oh, that's. Oh, love. love. As we heard of you coming in the church and getting a certain clique together and not dealing with other folk because you don't live where I live you don't go hey, he didn't say that no. he said that of the love which ye have to all the what Thanks. Thanks. he said I heard of your faith which is the fruit of the spirit right, right. and then he then he, then he go on that the faith was in who it was in Christ Jesus it wasn't in self, it wasn't in me, it wasn't in my, my own personal self, but the faith, he, he said, I heard of the faith that you have in Christ Jesus, because I'm, I'm just, I'm paraphrasing, I'm believing Paul would have had something to say if he found out their faith was in something different. Amen. He wouldn't be giving them no kind of accolade, but he was giving them accolade that your faith was in Christ Jesus, Amen. that you weren't trusting in self anymore, that you weren't trusting in your religious sect no more, but you were trusting in Christ, your faith was in Christ Jesus. He said, your faith in Christ Jesus and the love which ye have for all the saints. Pay attention. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the what? Gospel. Pay attention. Which is coming to us and into all of the world and bring it forth what? Fruit. And it, and it does also in, in you since the day ye heard it heard it of it and knew the grace of God in truth. It's impossible to have this love without the knowledge of what the true gospel has done. And, and to, to have this love, we got to recognize that it's our faith is in Christ and in what God has done through Christ to be able to give us this spirit. How? Through the gospel. The gospel is the antidote, is the main objective that we're able to love. Why? Because I can't receive the Holy Spirit without believing the gospel, the good news. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, when I look at dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God, then that means I had to be born again. That means that I had to be born again, and I had to be born from where? Above. 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 This is, this, is, this is good teaching for us today because we, as the body of believers, we're supposed to be the example that we are in Christ. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Go to our color. Come on, let's go. Uh, Y'all, uh -huh. let's go. I ain't going to stay there. Write the scripture down. Go back and study them again. Because we really need to be understanding that we are the body of Christ. We are in the body of Christ. That we are the example that we are the example of Christ. And that we are walking 
in Christ, so we should represent the same love that comes from above. Second Corinthians. We've been talking about this. No, we're going to talk about this. We've been talking about. And oftentimes people want to blame a lot of stuff on the, on the devil. But oftentimes it don't be the devil. It be our own flesh. Because the flesh is enmity to the spirit. So oftentimes, oh, the devil. No, the devil didn't do it. Just your flesh. I want you to lift your flesh up. And want to allow Holy Spirit. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you why we don't. Because we recognize if we really totally submit to Holy Spirit, it's going to be a change. It's going to be a change. Well, why you say that? Well, the scripture said, come on now. I, I, I'm just going to tell you what the scripture said. So y'all want me, he just saying that because he's saying that. No. 2 Corinthians uh, 5 and 17 said like this. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. If you hated it before, now you're a new creation you can't love. Why? Because you're a new creation. How? From up above. From up above. We're born again. And you're able to love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Not only that, Jesus command you to love your neighbor as you love yourself. And I ain't talking about your neighbor next door. I'm talking about the one that you can't even stand and look at. I can't stand. You know, if you're a believer, you got to learn to love. Got to. And, and it's, it's in you. Why? Because therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. That hate is gone. And guess what? The love is abounding. What enables us to do it is that flesh, that old man say, you know you can't stand that song, but you can't stand that song, and you can't stand, and then you believe. It ain't the devil, it's your flesh. You might well go and say, hey man, it's not the devil, it's your flesh. It's not my devil that's with me, it's my flesh. Pastor said that, it's my flesh that won't allow me to do it. Because I follow the flesh. Now y'all can go and admit it to <laughs> that God be the glory. I see I found out if a leader will do it, then some people, then everybody else will start doing it. And we follow the world. Everything the world do, we right with it. But the word of God said, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. And I believe what the word say, that I'm able to love somebody that despitefully used me. I'm able to love somebody and I recognize that they hate my guts. Why? Because I represent Christ. Well, why are you saying that? Go, come on. I, I love to go to the scripture. Go to, go to uh, Philippians. Go to Philippians. Humbling ourselves. Recognizing who Christ is. And recognizing that we're able to do this through the power of the Holy Spirit because we have a new creation. We got a new man that's in us that's empowered by the Holy Ghost. And that new man don't want to do nothing but please God. It can please God by the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because that, that, that transformation came through believing upon Jesus Christ as Savior. Believing that he saved me by grace through faith in what he did upon Calvary's cross. Amen? His blood has washed us clean. Love. 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 And then I'm going to go to a couple of spots and I'm going to show you what Apostle Paul said in a couple of areas that we need to be rooted in it. Rooted. Rooted. <laughs> and then I know somebody going to say, well, that nothing change. Don't nothing come overnight. Well, you got the Holy Spirit the moment you accepted Christ as your Savior. You got Holy Ghost right in. You didn't have to tarry. You didn't have to sit in front of the church for no three weeks. You got it immediately when you accepted Christ as your Savior. Holy Ghost came upon you right in. And it didn't take no, it took right then believing and trusting Christ as your Savior. So I ain't gonna take me a while to get over there. Well, don't wait, don't let it be too long. Don't let it be too long. Flesh again. Okay, here it is. Pay attention, pay attention. Cause I, I really want us to get this. I really want us to get and see it's the mind of Christ. This is the mind of Christ. Pay attention, pay attention to these, this, these scriptures right here. Pay attention, Philippians 2. 
I heard you I know you've heard it over and over and over. And you probably, if you stay up under this minute, you're going to continue to hear it over and 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 over. Amen. And I ain't going to stop. As long as God give me breath in my body. Here it is. It said in Philippians 2, it said, if that be therefore, Paul speaking to the church of Philippi, if that be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the spirit, if any bowels, tenderness, and mercy, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be what? Like-minded. Having the same what? Love. love. Being of what? One, One accord in a what? One mind. Not saying that we're robots, but we got the same love that we recognize is the dear friend let us love one another for love comes from God. We recognize that love comes from above. And we recognize that that's more powerful than anything on this earth because God created the heavens and the earth. And not only did he create it, he sustained it. It's because of him that we live, move in our very existence. Nobody wakes yourself up and the law talk don't either. It's God that touched you in the morning and wake you up. It's God that was lying on you to walk day to day. It's God that's given us every breath in our body. If he gave us that, then he gave us Love. Amen. And you know, it's, 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 it's selfish to think that we God. It, it's selfish and it's unappreciative that God has given us eternal life through what he did upon, with his son upon Calvary's cross, that he saved undeserving sinners and gave us the opportunity to have eternal life. And we won't acknowledge who he truly is. We want to acknowledge that God, you are all powerful, you're all knowledge, you're all knowing, you all, oh man, you you everything, God, you're sovereign. You uh, Father, I just love you so much because I was on my way to hell and you reached way down and you saved me. Can we ever just give him all the praise and all the honor and all the glory? So this is what Paul is saying. This is what Paul is saying. Fulfill me your joy that you be like-minded. That we recognize that love comes from above. That I recognize that this flesh got to continually die. And I got to walk in the spirit that I'm able to love unconditionally. Fulfill my joy that you be like-minded. Have the same love. We're not robots. But we all can love. Well, how can we do that? Through the power of the Holy Ghost. When we recognize that that fruit of spirit, which is love that is in us. How did it get there? God placed it there. Where did it come from? By what Christ did upon Calvary. He even told him, told his disciples that he was going to go away and that he was going to send back the comfort. Yes, he said, I'm going to send back the comfort. He said, go and wait and be empowered. I'm going to send back the comfort. And we recognize in Acts 2 when they was all in the upper room and the Holy Spirit fell upon them and they went to speaking the gospel. In all different languages. There wasn't no. Ah, blah, 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 blah. They spoke the gospel. The clothing tongues were speaking the gospel. If you spoke a language. And you spoke a different language. And you spoke a different. Because we were all here for the Passover. So all of them came from all over the place. And there wasn't no. Ah, blah, 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 blah. Now it was Christ died for your sin. And if all, if we all sinners. We're all in the sin. It was the gospel. Now I want you to take this to your town. You take this to your country. You take this to your country and spread the gospel, the good news that Jesus Christ came to die for sinners. Amen. It's the gospel that was spoken to him. Now, no, blah, 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 then you're going to get a new car. For what? Go out there and wreck it, tear it up. Then get another new car. It's not about that. It's about the lost being saved. God is, God is concerned about people being saved. He sent the gospel message to go ye to all of the world and preach my son Jesus. That people, the lost can be saved, that the ungodly can be saved. This is what's important to God. This is why he said the love. The love is what covers a multitude of sin. Because I can love my brother and sister no matter where they be and where they at. I can love them and guess what they can see? Christ in me. It ain't about us. It ain't about us. It's about God's plan. It's about his plan to save a dying 
and lost humanity. Well, prove it to me, Pastor. Well, go to the scripture then. That's all what I got for you. I ain't going to National Geographic. I'm going straight to the Bible. He said, fulfill you the joy, be like mine and having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done out of strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem others better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also upon the things of others. That's love. That's love. Love seeks the goods of others. Love seeks the goods of others. Love will say, guess what? I got plenty. I don't need nothing. Guess what? You can have this and then I'll get I, it's all gonna supply my need. Cause it's rich and glory through Christ Jesus. Y'all can have that. I'm gone. And then I'm gone. That's love. In the believer. In the believer. Now unbeliever, one that haven't come and been saved, then he's just trying to show off. He's just trying to make people think they're good. I gave this away, and now guess what I gave it to you? Then put it on Facebook. Look, y'all, I gave this away. That's pride. That's selfish. That ain't that ain't God. So when you see people bragging, that ain't God. Because God hates braggers. He hates it. He hates pride. He hates, he don't want you telling everybody what you do. He don't want that ain't of God. It's of the devil. It's of the devil. See, mama, go on, get that in your mind. Quit posting all everything you do something for somebody. Because it's of the devil. It's not a believer. And then it said, not let every man look up on his own. Because when you do that, you're looking up on your own thing. Right. Yeah, I want everybody to see what I got. So I'm going to get this to them. Ah, cheese. <laughs> then you just got your reward right now. Right there. You got your reward right now. The Bible says that. The Bible says you get your reward now. So, so look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let, come on, let, oh, come, come on. Let this mind be in you, which was also in your president, uh -oh. yeah. your governor, right. your pastor, your pope, your principal, your teacher. Who? Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. Well, what, what did he do? Well, what did he do? Who being in the form of God, he was in the form of God, he's in the form of God, hide and hide. He is in the form of God. Thou did not rob to be equal with God, but made of himself what? Of no reputation. In other words, he didn't walk around bragging that I'm the son of God. They came to it, well, you say this, and I say this, you do this. And yeah, when well, y'all said it, they okay. They didn't brag. They didn't have to brag. He was the son of God. What did John say? That's the sheep. What he said when he when he seen him coming up, the, behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. John recognized who he was. Because you know what John said? It's one coming that I'm not even able to what? Unlatch his shoelace. Huh? He knew that. He said, I'll baptize you with water, but he's going to baptize you with what? Fire and the Holy Ghost. So, so, so recognizing God, who Jesus is, he said, but he made of himself a no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. Wow. Jesus Christ, a servant. We're talking about love now. We're talking about love. We're talking about us as believers, us as pastors, us as believers in Christ. We are servants. They're, that's ministers we serve. Why, why, then he said that he became a servant and was made in the likeness of man. And being born, found in the fashion of man, he humbled himself and came obedient, what? Unto the death. And even the death of the cross, the worst death that you could ever go up or live crucified. To be crucified was the worst death ever. It was, it, it was the, the, the greatest way to be killed. In that time, if you hung up on that cross, that means you were the worst of the worst, the bottom of the pit. This is what they did to our Jesus. Thinking that they were doing something good or bad, but they were doing something good. And it was already preordained. It was already preordained that he would be the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. And it said, wherefore God had made God said, has also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above what? Yeah. Every name. That at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow on things that are in heaven and things in earth and the things under earth. 
and that every knee should confess and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The example of love. The example of love that Jesus came and down, coming down from on high. He said, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus, that he didn't think of himself more highly than nobody else. But he walked this earth and he was, he was obedient unto the Father. He went up on the cross. He laid down his life that we may have eternal and everlasting life. Amen. Amen. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Thinking about what Moses, what he said in Moses on down in the other scriptures, he said that he had that serpent that everybody that would look up at that serpent would live. But if they didn't, they would die. So when we go to look at anything else than, other than Jesus Christ up on the cross and Jesus Christ on the finished work of the cross, then guess what? We perish. The same difference in that God loved the world that he gave Jesus Christ to die for the sins of the world. It said, let it not, uh, it said in, that, in, in, in John 15 and 9, said, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. You now remain in my love. That's what he told his disciples. Now remain in my love. Amen. And Jesus said this in John 15, 12, and, and, and 14. Jesus said, my commandment is this. John 15, 12, and 14. My commandment is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one or no man than this, that he laid down his life for his friend. You are my friend if you do what I command. We're able to love through the power of the Holy Spirit. We're able to love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Paul says it like this in Ephesians. Go to Ephesians. Talking about love, Christ is our, Christ is our example. The believers walking in love. <clears throat> Ephesians 3, Ephesians 3. I'm going to start at 14. I'm going to go here and then I'm going to go down. I, I got more script that I can go with that, but I'm going to go here for the sake of getting to where I want to go. For this cause I bow my knee unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. We just heard about that. Every knee should bow and every tongue can confess. That whom grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his what? Spirit. In what? The inner man. Pay attention. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by what? Faith. That ye be rooted and grounded in what? Love. love. Rooted and grounded in love. How? By faith in who? Christ Amen. Jesus. How? through by us being born again believers, by us believing the gospel, by us receiving the Holy Spirit, because we believe the truth, we believe the gospel, we recognize that we saved by grace through faith in what Jesus Christ did up on Cambridge Cross, and we receive the Holy Spirit, and now we're able to say that Christ will be, grant, be uh, 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 dwell in us, and to dwell in something is to what? Live. How? By faith. By faith. And guess what? Paul was praying this. He said, I bow my knee unto the Father of our Lord and Jesus Christ. So in other words, it takes some prayer to be going on as well as us trusting. It takes prayer that we as the body of believers will continue to grow in faith of who Christ is that would enable us to love others. How? Because in order to reach out to others, it's got to be some love in our heart to want to see somebody else be saved. Somebody will say amen. amen. I, 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 I'm not so much uh, concerned about uh, where that person is at the point that they get saved. 
I'm concerned about that person receiving the gospel and allow God to do whatever he going to do in his life. Right. After that point, it's up to God. It ain't up to me. I can't be no fruit inspector. Let me see the court of steel, Lord. Who she did with in first name? Let me go back and tell her about it. <laughs> Guess what? He might just use her to go in front. I'm going to use front now. Found that plug, plug, plug. He might be using her to go in there and share the gospel with somebody else. And they come out both of you at church in the morning. You get it? Yeah. It's up to us to share the gospel because we love. Why, why, how you love? Because it's in us through the power of the Holy Ghost. And he told us to go ye therefore and what? Spread the gospel. Preach the gospel. We're responsible for sharing Jesus. And what, 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 what makes us want to do that? Because of the love that we want to see people saved. We, we spend too much time worrying about how somebody living and instead of just giving them the gospel. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And not only that, he said that he died for us while we were yet sinners. He died for us while we were yet ungodly. So, so, so when Paul said that Christ may dwell in their hearts by faith, <clears throat> this is believing under no circumstances on the no, nothing around me that, that, that Christ is able to come out. He's dwelling now. He's dwelling now. And he's dwelling by faith. I recognize that he's dwelling and I can't kick him out. I can't evict him. He's there forever, for eternal. He's there. And to the day that I go to be with him, to the day that he come back in, he, he can't, it, he, it won't be no eviction note there. He want to dwell there. Come on. Jesus, time for you to leave. He can't, I can't leave. Because I told you I never leave you, know what I ever forsake you. I can't leave him. Well, he, he down up in there. He fell in the gutter. I still ain't going to leave him right here with him in the gutter. And when he get back up, I'm going to still be with him when he get back out of there. Why? Because I said I never leave you, know what I ever forsake you. Because why? Because I said I love you. I said I love you. When I said I love you, I can't turn my back on you. I, God said I can't turn my back on you because I love you. And not only that, I, I love you first than you love me. And not, not only that, my love didn't what came in a, in, a, in a Valentine's gift. My love came from above. My love is, 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 is unconditional. My love is sovereign. My love is that I love you unconditional no matter who you are, where you've been, and where you're going. I still love you. And take, not take my love. What can separate us from the love of Christ? Nothing. This is the kind of love that the believer has in you if you allow the spirit to work in you. <laughs> if you allow the spirit to work and not the flesh, you're able to love unconditionally no matter what it is. And this is what the church needs to understand is that God placed us within the body of Christ that our love will be there that I like to shine to them, give the Father the glory and give him the praise. We represent Jesus. And the Father get all the praise and all the honor and all the glory. Right. He gets it. Not us. We don't get no data boy. He gets all the praise and honor. And if you want a data boy, then you, you're in the wrong place. For by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. Not a works lest any shall boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ unto good works, which God had before ordained that you should walk in. He knew that you would be in him right now. If you're born again, if you accept Christ as your Savior, you've truly been born again, God knew that you was going to accept Jesus as your Savior. You might well say amen. So, so then he said that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. And he being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend, I mean, understand with all the saints, what is the bread, what is the length, what is the depth and the height. And to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that ye may be what? Filled with all the fullness of God. Then he said, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Jesus, by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. 
power right there and the love that God has placed within us through the power of the Holy Ghost to enable us to love. 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 John said, love not the world, nor the things that are in it, the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. He said, if you love these things, then the love of the Father is not in you. Love. 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 Dear friend, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God. You've been born again and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us. God so loved us when we also ought to love one another. But let me go back. It is, my eyes run for it. He said he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sin. I'm giving the gospel right now. That's the gospel. Let me back up and give us the gospel again because somebody might need to hear this because somebody might want to be saved. Somebody might want to be saved. Let me go back. This is how God showed his love amongst us. He sent his only begotten son who was sinless guy who knew no sin, who did no sin, who was born of the virgin. Oh, yeah, he was born from what? Up above. He could not sin because he was born from up above. Mary was a, she was a sinner because she was born in the flesh. So all flesh is what? Born in the sin, right? All in sin and fallen short of the glory of God. So if you came in the flesh, then that means you came in sin. Amen? You have to be born again. Come on, here it is. He said, this is how he showed his love among us. He sent his only son into the world that we might live through him. This is the love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son and as an atoning sacrifice for our sin. He sent his son to die for our sins. He sent him because he loved us that he gave us a way out. The Old Testament way was they had to have a sacrifice atonement every year. Okay? And they did it every year. But now Guess what? He has given Jesus Christ that if we come before and accept him one time, one time, one time, you ain't got to go back and forth every time. Ooh, I, ooh, ooh, ow, uh oh, then I've got to go back to Jesus and then get saved again. No, you say it one time. Once and for all. And guess what he did when he got through with his word? He sat down on the right hand side of God the Father. Now guess what he's doing? He's our mediator. Guess what he's doing? He's interceding for us right now. Sitting right there. He's a, he ours. He's in our family now. Why? Because we're sons of God now. We've been adopted into the family. And he can't change his mind about that. We have eternal security. Once we got saved, we saved forever. And I know I get pulled back on that, but once you say it one time, you say it forever. Because he has given you eternal life forever. When you leave this body to be absent with the, in the body is to be present with the Lord. Soon as I lay my head down, I'm going to be with the Lord. Y'all go eat potato salad and chicken and one that want a middle light, go and get it because I know you're going to do it. But I'm going to be with the Lord. I'm going to be with the Lord. And you're going to be with the Lord. And, and, and that's it. So, so we understand this. And we understand this. Paul is talking about that him dwelling in our hearts by faith is that we understand and know that we are saved. And not only that, we are able to love because of what God done through Jesus Christ to allow us to be able to do that. There's so much love that God has given that when he died for us, when we were yet sinners. And the Bible said it like this. It said, but God, it said it like this, that, 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 uh, and you had he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. That's love. Where in the time past you walked according to the course of the world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, God say it with me, but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. 
Well, God don't care. He don't love nobody that. No, God love us. Well, God, you can't tell me that God love him because he's been uh, drunk all this. God love him. Right. Well, you can't tell me how he do it because God loves him. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And God wish that all shall be saved and none shall perish. And how can we as men can say, but he ain't going to never change. Who cares? God would love him. He loved him right where he at. He loved our trifling behind right where we was at. By his grace we are saved. By his grace we saved. And he's able to save to the uttermost. God has not lost one. Except the son of perdition. He has not lost one. He can't lose one. And he wasn't here. Then he was on the devil. So this is the love that he said that, that, that but God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead. Now he waited till I got it right. Now he waited till I was, I'm going to make my mind, you know what, maybe we go to church. And go, let's go out to, is Mac Ray still on? Ain't no <laughs> Baby, come on, let's go to our dealers and get us a brand new suit. I think I made my mind up on the gone get. We gonna go on do this thing. And now, nah, while we were yet yeah. in, dead in our trespass, yeah. dead in sin, had quickened us together with Christ. Yeah. And He said, "By grace are ye saved." Amen. By grace are ye saved. See, this is the love. This is the love that God had when He when He gave Jesus Christ. This is the love that he allowed us to have when we got born again. He allowed us to have this love. Where did it come from? It comes from above and it comes from God. It was placed through us by the belief that we understood that we are saved by grace through faith in what Jesus Christ did up on Calvary's cross. How do we void that? By thinking we're saved by works that the law saved us. Saved by grace. He quickened us together with Christ by grace, though you say, and had made us to sit in heavenly places. Places in Christ Jesus. That in the age to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his uh his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved, through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man shall boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore, remember that ye being time past Gentiles in the flesh were, were all called uncircumcision, by which in is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ being alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of the promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now is Christ Jesus ye, but but now in Christ Jesus ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh. How? By the blood of Jesus Christ. And this is what we do when we take a communion. We recognize that this blood has brought us and reconciled us back to God. Yes. The blood of Jesus Christ for the believer has reconciled us back unto God. Well, you say God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe it. That go to question. That go to thing right there. Do you believe? Not only do you believe, do you believe and only believe that Jesus Christ is the one that saved you? Not him plus something else. That's the difference in believing. Do we believe that, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and Jesus Christ's blood is enough to wash away all your sins and save you and bring you into his kingdom right now? That is the believing that that scripture means. You don't believe, believe, and then I got to do something else. It believe that by grace, you am saved through faith in what Christ did. It's a finished work. It's a done deal. It's over with. I'm saved. No matter where I might find myself at in five years from now, I'm saved. I might have a hiccup tomorrow, but guess what? I'm saved. I might have a hiccup before I get out the pool, but guess what? I'm saved. Because it ain't my worst that saved me. 
This is the love that God has for us. That I'm able to love you. I'm able to love you. He's able to love us regardless. And this is the same love that he has placed in us through the Holy Spirit. If we quench not the Spirit and allow the love to dwell in us by faith of Christ. This is what the believer is to do. This is what the believer is supposed to walk in his love. Why? We got to have the mind of Christ. I got one more, and I promise you, baby. I promise you. I probably got one more. She, uh, I got one more. Don't get mad. Don't get mad. Come, I, I, I want to get. I want us to go right here to Colossians. Because we want to recognize that this love that, we, that we're talking about, it comes from us believing and trusting Jesus Christ. It comes from us believing God. It comes from us believing every word that proceeded out the mouth of God. It comes from us understanding that we should study to show ourselves the proof, rightly divine the word of God. Amen? Understanding that once we understand that there's nothing that we did to deserve the love, there's nothing that we could have ever done to deserve the love, that is God's sovereignty that loves us unconditionally is because of who God is. Amen? Amen? And if we ever think that we can give God something to make him love us more, then you might as well just keep it. Because God don't want it. He gave Jesus. And he said, this is my son who I'm well pleased with. I think that is what they call that when you tell somebody something, you give them something, and they say, well, I gave you this and such and such. What they call that when you do that? Uh, it's a, it'll come to me a little while. In other words, you are uh, not disrespect, but it, no, it was, it's an insult. It's an insult to God and take that we can give him something other than just trust in Christ. It's an insult to God. And, and I, want, I don't never want to insult God God the Father, God the Creator, God the Sustainer, God the Everlasting, I Am. He is God. Amen. Well, I think I just want to give you just a little something, God, that I might get add to that what Jesus did. Uh -huh. No. And that's what we say when he's saying that we need to do just a little something else to be saved than just trust Christ. That's what you're saying. And we recognize that this is love that saved us. It's love that saved us. It's love that saved us. Pay attention to what uh, Paul says in Colossians. He says it like this in, 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 second, in the second chapter. I'm going to go through the second chapter. Now, I just want to see he was saying the same thing in every church. He was saying the same thing in each one of these letters. He kept saying the same thing. He kept reminding them of who Christ is how we should love, and how that we should uh, uh, trust what Jesus did on Calvary, and, and not only that, that we should be faithful in the God. At one point, he even said, I might, I might be in uh, uh, Philippians, that he said, let only your conversation be, be becoming of the gospel. He was always reminding them about the gospel. Why? Because this is the gospel message that we go and tell the, uh, a dying world about what Jesus Christ did upon Calvary, that we can be saved. And, and that, that not only that, that he would allow the mind of Christ to be within us. How? Through the power of the Holy Spirit. He is the third person in the Godhead. Holy Ghost. Amen. He is real. He dwells in us. He lives in us. Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. It's he, not it. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. And he said it like this. And he said it like this. He said it like this in Colossians 2. He said, for I would that ye know what great conflict I have for you. And for them at Laodicea, and for as many as have have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted. Pay attention. Being knit together, how in hate. What? Why does man keep talking about love? Because he recognized that it's love that saved him. He recognized that it was that the grace of God that allowed him to be saved. Amen. It is that be knit together in love and unto all riches and the full assurance of understanding. What is our verse? Faith come by hearing and hearing by what? So the understanding is going to come by the hearing of the word of God. Amen. And to a person that's Holy Spirit has opened up their spiritual ears and be able to hear it and your heart not be hard, 
but it be a uh, uh, flesh a flesh heart that God is able to circumcise it to allow that word to penetrate your heart and it be like a two-edged sword that you be able to understand it and that way you have full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and the Father and of Christ in whom are hidden the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. How can I get it? Through Holy Spirit, open up my spiritual ears, and I'm hearing what the words say, and I'm interpreting, interpreting, interpreting it right. Amen. All right, that's our father that. But getting it right, not making it say what I want to say to make my flesh say, "Oh, hallelujah, I'm blessed and highly favored." But make me say, you know what? I ain't nothing but a wretched. I, oh Lord, I, oh I'm, oh I ain't no good. Oh, I thank God that He loved me so much. See, that was the scripture. That was what more people want the scripture to say. Oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. Oh, I got me a new man. Oh, I got a new house. Glory be to God. As soon as Bob break it down, be on time out. We need a cash out to help us get the house back. Now let God give you another house back. This is why we got to interpret the scriptures right. This is why he said, I want you to get the knowledge of God and who God truly is. It's not about physical and material things. It's about his love for us. And now do he bless us with much? Yes, he do. He said, I give you all things to enjoy. I give you all things to enjoy. But you recognize where it comes from. So when you lose it, you say, well, I ain't worried about because God bless me again with it again. I don't deserve it. He give it to me again. I ain't worried about it. Concerned about it. I got it, I got it. I found myself to be content wherever God put me. Well, that's right. That's what Paul said. Hey, yeah. He was blessed and highly favored because he was content with what he had. Yeah. And that's what we got to be. So, so, he, so he's telling them that this is what I want you to really do. I want you to get the acknowledgement of who Christ truly is. I want you to recognize the wisdom and the knowledge that God has given us. Why? Because I need to use you to reach others for Christ. And then you can't do it if you don't really know what Christ did for him. Because soon somebody say, you mean you tell me all I got to do is trust Jesus Christ? And then you're going to be like, now you need to be bold and say, yes, that's all you got to do is trust Jesus Christ. Because he's the way, the truth, and the life. By grace, though, you saved through faith in what he did upon Calvary. And you're going to be able to stand on it boldly. God told me last week he thought he was going to be saved because he was pretty good. I said, wrong answer. Huh? Wrong answer. You can be saved because of what Jesus Christ did upon Calvary. And that's the only way. One way. He said, I am the way. I am the life. He's the truth and the life. No man can come through the Father but through. Come on now. You get it? So being good ain't going to get you there. No, he ain't. No. But you saved already. So to guess what? It's Christ in you now. So whatever the words Christ have in they've been foreordained anyway. That you may walk in. I don't know what. I don't know what that walk, walk might take you through. That might that walk might take you through a wilderness time for about 10 or 10, 15, 30 years. And then right there at the end of it come and get you. I don't know. I don't know. It took Jesus there. It took Jesus there. Took him to the cross there. It took him in the wilderness. Took him in the wilderness. Amen. So 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 who I just thank God for wherever he got me at. Amen. And that's what we need to be. So we told him, come on, come on, let, let's go. And then it said this, in whom are hidden the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. And see, I can tell you, oh, God and sister, God and girl, I'm going to lay hands on you. And oh, you're going to be, and oh, yeah. Put some enticing words on you. He said, don't let nobody beguile you with that. So don't be running to these these things that people just tell you, come on in because I got a blessing for you today. Now God is already blessed. I'm blessed now. And then I'm going to say no holy faith because Jesus died for my sins. Right. He gave me eternal life. He gave me life everlasting. Right. I'm truly blessed. And guess what? I did not deserve it. Right. I deserve hell. I deserve to be burning right now. But he, he loved me that he gave Jesus Christ to die for a sinner. He could die for a sinner that was on his way to hell. He reached way down in the pit and pulled you up. And guess what? Made me look at the cross and see Jesus. Amen. So I, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. And no, I'm not going to give you an offer. <laughs> you, you beguiling people. You, you're lying to people. 
You tell them it's something that they can do. If you just do this, then God is going to do that. Well, what about if I just trust God in what he's already done? Amen. Past sense. Done. Why can't I just do that? Why can't I just recognize the love of God and recognize that he loved me so much that he gave his only God son to die for my life that I should not perish? Now I have eternal life. I have everlasting life right now. Right now. And one day I'm going to be with him in heaven. One day you will be with him in heaven. Right? This is what he's telling you. Don't let nobody beguile you with enticing words. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in the spirit. Join and behold in your order and the steadfastness of your faith. How? In Christ. And then he said this, and ye have therefore received, as ye have therefore received Christ the Lord, so walk ye in him. Guess how? Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man should spoil you with philosophy and vain deceit after traditions of men and after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And ye are complete in him, which is the what? Head of all principalities and powers, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made with our hand, and putting off the body of sin of the flesh, by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who had raised him up from the dead. That's that born again. That's the operation of God. Only God can, 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 can give you born again. The only way you can be born again, you got to be born of God. Amen. I can't put my hands on you and say, the Lord, he's born again. That don't work. Because then if I do it, then I say I did. I can't do it. Amen? Amen. And he said, you've been dead in sin, your sins, and in uncircumcision of your flesh. He had he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotted out the handwriting of the ordinance that was against you, which is contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Amen. All of it. Every one of them. Amen? Amen. This is the love that God has allowed us through the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to receive that love that we can recognize, dear friend, let us love one another for love comes from God. Not only that, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed upon him shall not perish. Not only that, God gave Jesus to atone for the sins of the world that if you will come and accept Jesus Christ as your Savior right now by faith in what he did, you can be saved. For the Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There's none that seek after God. No, not one. No, not one. What did I do for it? No, not one. Let every man be a lie and God be what? The truth. <laughs> so, the, so the issue is today is that, 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 that if you're not saved, you can be saved. And then if you are saved, then trust God and walk in love. Walk in Christ. This is the message today. If you're not saved, you can be saved right now. And if you are saved already, guess what you're going to do? Walk in love. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Christ didn't meet no strangers. Christ didn't, the only person that he was giving uh, judgment to was those Pharisees that were lying to him and trying to tell him that it was something they did to make God love them more than everybody else. And he tore them up. Every time he seen them, he tore them up. But when he ran across the prostitute, he showed love. When he met the Samaritan woman at the well, he showed love. When he went to the kid's house, he showed love. He went to the Pharisees, man, what you doing sin with that, them sinners? He says, now, isn't it the sick that need a physician? Huh? He says, isn't it the sick? But they peeping in the door. They want to know what's going on. But I tell you right now, God will receive you right now, right where you at. If you happen to be riding down the road right now, and you're going somewhere, if you right now, you can receive the gospel message and be saved. If you're getting ready to watch the football game, is the game on or one on a night, day or night? And you happen to flip through this channel, you can be saved right now. You don't have to be in the church setting to get saved. 
Because we are the church. And we got the gospel in us. And we're able to share Jesus Christ with uh, those that are lost. So if it be one lost today and you want to be found, come right now and accept Christ as your Savior. Guess what he said? I'll save you right now. For by grace are we saved. By faith. Not a work that any man should boast. It is a free gift of God. That's by grace that we are saved. Recognize that we're sinners. Because he said that all have sinned and fallen short. All have sinned and fall short. All have sinned and keep falling short. Amen. He is the Savior. He is the Redeemer. Once he saved you, you can't be lost again. So, so, so right now, if it be one right now that, that, that haven't accepted Christ as your Savior, you can be saved right now and don't never have to be worried about being lost anymore. Who the Son makes free, free is free indeed. And y'all see I got that now. Don't. He makes you free. You free indeed. Not let you free because if you get let free, you can be caught again. He makes you free. Free from your sin. Free. Free from all iniquity. Free. And he has placed his blood upon you when you accept him. And when God looks down, he sees the blood of Jesus Christ. And that's my son who I'm well pleased with. Yes, Glory be to God. He, he don't see you no more. He sees his son's blood because you accepted it by faith. So if it be one today, if you would accept Christ today and be saved, just recognize that it's by grace that you are saved through faith in what Jesus Christ has done upon Calvary's cross. If you believe the gospel, the good news is that God sent his son to die for the sins of the world. That if you come and accept him by faith, he'll save you by grace through faith in of what Jesus Christ did. Then you can be saved. So if it be one that want to be saved today, come in on the comments. Come in and just let us know uh, that you accepted Christ as your savior today. Just let us know if you want to be saved. Just come on in. And right now, I pray that God will allow Jesus to dwell in your heart by faith. And I pray that you would go up onto a, a, a Bible teaching church and sit up under the word and continuously be uh, taught of the word. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And we thank you right now. We thank you, Father, for one that was saved today. We thank you for the body of believers today, Father. We ask that you would allow the Holy Spirit to be in control in us in, in that time of love. Father God, even when it's time that we have to show love to those who despitefully use us, to those who are not so kind to us, give us the ability, not, on, not, not give us the ability, but allow Holy Spirit to overrule that flesh, that we can love that person because we recognize that it is pleasing unto you that we love. Father, we thank you for what you're doing right now through the power of the Holy Spirit to show us love. And we thank you that you loved us so much that you gave your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sin. And not only that, we thank you that love comes from you, Father God, and that you are the only one that is able to give love. Because you have that unconditional love, that you have agape love. Agape love meaning that it's unconditional. They don't, it's, it's nothing tied to it. You just love. And so we thank you right now, Father God. We ask that you will strengthen us in our walk in love. Because we recognize, Father God, that we can't have joy with our love. We recognize we can't have peace with our love. We recognize we can't have faith with our love. We recognize we can't have goodness with our love. We recognize we can't have temperance with our love. We recognize that we can't have peace with our love. We recognize that we need love, oh God, that all the other fruit may be manifest. So we thank you right now for opening up our spiritual eyes to see love. And we ask right now, Father God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, that you would grant that that, that power to us to be able to walk in love just as Christ walked with the same mind being in him so we thank you Father God that you have created in us a new mind because you told us to be ye transformed by the renewing of our mind and we thank you for that transformation of the mind and Father God we thank you for that new creation that allow us to be in Christ Jesus we thank you Father God and Father God, we pray for those believers that are not with us today all over the world. We ask that you will allow Christ to dwell in their hearts by faith. Not only that, Father God, we ask that you, in this assembly right now, those that are dealing with ailments, we ask that you will move in a mighty way, Father God. And your will be done, Father. And we thank you for that. And we thank you, Father, that we learn to be content in wherever we find ourselves at, knowing that you, you have everything for us in your will. 
and you will not allow anything to happen that's not in your will. So we thank you, Father God. We bless your holy name. We give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. And Father, we ask that your word will continue to have free course throughout the whole world. We ask that your gospel message be preached from the rooftop, that souls will be saved. We ask that you would continue to use us out in the vineyard, O oh God, to find those pearls that you have placed all over the world, that lost souls be saved. And we ask that you use us mightily, Father God, continuously, through whatever means that you give us, O oh God, allow us to be effective in the gospel. And Father God, I ask that you will give us that strength that we won't grow weary in well-doing as we go out and as we do that which you have called us to do, share the gospel around the world, that the lost be saved. Now, Father God, we ask that you go into each and every family right now. And Father God, if it be one not saved, we ask that God, that you allow somebody to plant and somebody to water. And we recognize that your word said that you will give the increase. So allow us to have that long suffering that we need to be able to share your gospel message and that meekness, Father God, to show that love that you have given us through the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father. We bless you. We give you praise, honor, and we give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray and we say amen. Amen, amen and amen. God be the glory. God be the glory.